Ladies and gents, hello to another virtual premiere, our Monday morning mobility session. I hope you enjoy it. Um, so we're just gonna get started shortly. You will need something to sit on. Um, you won't need it for very long. It can be a chair, anything that you can hold on to and lean away from. And we're just gonna focus primarily today on neck, shoulder, effectively against the desk posture. So those of you that have been slumped in your home chairs over the last few months, we're gonna really go for the anti-desk posture type routine this morning. So first thing I want you to do is grab yourself one of these. We'll get going in just a few seconds. And don't forget your daily water challenge. Are you drinking enough water? If you're following our daily checklist, we're asking you to do about two, two and a half liters. The real correct amount is 15 milliliters for every pound of body weight. That's what you should be aiming for. Okay, folks, good morning. Monday morning mobility and anti-desk posture today. So grab your something. It doesn't matter if you don't have it in time. If you don't have it in time, you can sit on your couch or you can just reach down to your side and lean back. But if you do, grab that something to hold on to. Just hold on to it. Just lean away. I'm just going to start my stopwatch. Just lean away. Keep that shoulder back. Lean away. Now, I always encourage people to freestyle when they're stretching. So move your shoulder around a little bit. Move your neck around a little bit. Find out where works for you. Really allow that shoulder to sink, but I would ask you to try and keep it back. Keep that chest up, pull the shoulder back. That's it, and really play around. So right there for me. Now take your time in these Monday morning mobility sessions, and you can do this anytime you like. The great thing about this new setup with our virtual premieres is that we're gonna keep this, keep this in this link all day, plus, even though you're watching me now after we've premiered, you can still skip back and start whenever you need to. So if you turned up a little bit late, don't worry about it. In the meantime, just holding on to that edge, lean back, move that neck how you feel you need to. Keep that shoulder back at all times. Don't be afraid to freestyle it a little bit where do you need to, but what I will ask is that when you find that point, have a little explore, find that point, and then keep it there. We really want to spend some time in this. Now, don't forget, you can also use your other hand, apply a bit of pressure. Now, I'm trying to pull my head up, get a small contraction out of that, just, just, just enough to get a contraction. And then after holding that for about 10 seconds, you can let that head relax and again a little bit more. That contraction at that end range just convinces that muscle, oh, I'm not in as much trouble as maybe as I first thought so I can relax a little bit more and don't have to worry about that tightening, that recoil effect when you hold a static stretch. Now folks, an important part of our mobility routine is making sure that we really take that time with that breathing. So whilst we're making sure that that shoulder is back, we're tilting away with that neck, feeling that stretch. Some of you might feel it right down into the shoulder. Big breath in through the nose and out through the mouth. mobility routines because you can roll out of bed gradually get started with the day you really feel like you've achieved something and the body and the mind really does feel so much better for going through something like this so guys keep holding keep going don't forget at any point in your mobility routines you can decide to stand up shake things around now you probably don't need to do that with this neck neck one but at any point, remember, you're the boss, you're in control, you can feel how you're feeling. All right, next side, let's swap it around. So hold on to that side, tuck in that elbow, keep that shoulder back, head up, and then tilt it to the side you might find. You just want to lift that chin up slightly. So explore, find out where it works for you. But what we do want to do is keep that chest up, that shoulder back into that position. There. And then don't forget, after we've been there, about 30 seconds, 
we can then decide to maybe pull in, get a little bit of tension on that. Hold that for about 10. And relax. But we want to keep holding this in tight roughly for about three minutes. That's what we did on the last one. Now, common belief is that you want to be holding, holding that 20, 30 to 60 second marker. I think we want to push way past that. Now, the problem with that is that it's quite time consuming. If you don't have a lot of time, I really would suggest keeping an eye on that PNF stretch and that contract relax. Now, anytime you do a stretch, keep that going, guys. Anytime you do a stretch and maybe you're short on time and you can't just sit there and relax and unwind, hold, make your way into the stretch, hold that position, focus on the breathing, just like I'm sure you are now. Get that contraction, so contract, hold it for roughly about 10 seconds and then relax into it a little bit further. And that's called PNF stretching, proprioceptive neuromuscular facilitation. Really is a great way of getting that body to relax that a little bit sooner. That's it guys, and focus on that breathing. So you should still be holding that stretch, shoulders back, back into this position. Yeah, freestyle it if you need to. So keep that going, we're gonna go for one more minute. That's it. There you go. Good, now don't forget, in through the nose, out through the mouth, and you can keep that going. We want to be, make sure there's a consistent focus on that, inhaling through the nose, nice and deep, and out. So just a little bit longer on that next strip, holding on that side. Remember, if you don't have the side, you can push down, pull round, really focus on using that lat to squeeze that shoulder down in position. But we want to tuck that shoulder back, Get that back and remember we can add that contract relax contract 10 seconds and see if we can relax into things a little bit further now just stop pulling yourself out of that focusing in on the breathing that's it perfect now from there put my head on this side you can still be sitting on your desk or your um your seat wherever it is you've got with you now you're just going to pull that that chin down bring that hand just underneath, hand on the back of the head. And we're just gonna try and lift that neck up. And hold that position there. So we're just pulling up on the back of that neck, trying to take the pressure off. That's it. Hold that position there. That's what we're going for. Now, if you don't feel anything whilst doing that, what I want you to do is to really drop that head down. You can hold that, and then we're gonna lift it up, really lift that neck up. Now, even as we lift that neck up, we still wanna keep those shoulder blades together, lift that chest, lift that neck up. Now, or you could be there, don't forget you guys at the beginning, holding that neck down so that chin comes in to the neck. we we'll just lift, just to take that pressure off of that back of that neck. Now there are some really cool little neck slings that you can get that sort of tied to the top of your door. They hang down and you lie back into them into that position and it just takes the pressure off of the, that neck and it feels so relaxing. Now those of you that are still lifting that neck up and down, keep going. And what do we do? Focus on that breathing. Those of you that are just trying to take that pressure off that neck by pulling the chin in, supporting it and lifting the back of the head up, keep going. But again, focus on that breathing. Right guys, stand yourselves up, don't forget, plenty of water. So, standing, just get yourself up now, get this out of the way. All right, just starting at the top, getting yourself nice and relaxed. 
and I just want you to drop that head down, drop the head down, and I want you to try and fold everything all the way down. Just drop down, drop down, drop down. That's it. Drop everything down. Really try and fold that spine in half. Allow those hamstrings really to relax. Keep the legs nice and straight for me. Now, if your hands are touching the floor, you can just cradle your, your elbows and really allow the back of the head just to hang down. That's it. Just hold yourself in that position. Don't forget, folks, focusing on that breathing in. And out through the mouth. And in through the nose. Now, at any point, if you need to stand up, shake yourself out, walk yourself around again, you can do it. It's no problem. As soon as you're ready, same again, dropping yourself down. If you're still going, you're doing the right thing. Keep going. Drop yourself down, fold yourself in. If you're touching the floor a bit too easy, you can just hold your elbows and cradle. Keep your legs nice and straight. Give yourself a little wiggle if you want to help things relax a little bit more. And remember, we want to be focusing on pulling that back of the head down. So often you'll find whenever you do anything which starts to stretch that upper body or starts to stretch the spine or folds you over, you'll see that highlighted desk posture. So you'll notice that actually you start relaxing the neck into that position. It's important that we encourage the back of the head to lift up and stretch all up here. Keep going on that a little bit longer and focus on that breathing. Now, if you've had to stand up and shake around again, no problem. But when you're ready, what do we do? Fold ourselves back down. There, if we're touching the floor, we can cradle. We can shake around, just a bit left and right, just to allow ourselves to relax a little bit more. Still focusing on that breathing. Inhale. If we find that our neck is tight and it lifts that chin up a little bit more, just put some pressure on the back of that head. That's it, guys. Get yourself coming to an end. Now, as you pull yourself back up, what I want you to do is I want you to focus on pressing down through your feet. So start bringing yourself back around, press through your feet, and feel those tight hand hamstrings have to lift to get you back up. All right? Now, onto all fours for me. This is called a spinal wave. So we're gonna sit back down into our hips, right back. Then we're gonna straighten the legs, roll through the spine, Make sure your elbows are tucked in nicely, down. Now the real thing I wanna see happen here is the shoulders come back, chest comes up. We push away into the ground and lift up that chin. There. And then we're down onto the floor, back here. Really come back into those arms, allowing that bum to sit right back, stretch out the side there, push up. Roll through the spine. There. And up. Lift that chest. Down. That's it. And again. Remember, in through the nose. You ready? Sit back. Now, if you wanted to make this a bit more of a workout, you can, I'll show you. Straighten the legs, pull out here, down, lift up. If you wanted to make it a bit more challenging, you can keep your knees and your hips and your feet off the floor, like so. Down, up. Now you're all gonna be saying, why would I wanna do that? This is. Morning mobility, I'm gonna keep it nice and steady. But if you did, it's there. I 
that's it, last time. Start, you can do it one more time if you want to. Start winding things down. That's it. Now from there, oh, quick drink of water. Into this position. Hands behind. Notice how my elbow pits are facing forward. I'm gonna lift up that chest and I'm gonna take my hips off the ground, really working on those shoulders. So really tuck, lift that chest, tuck those shoulders back, tuck the elbows back, and you can just rock forward. Now, if you want to take it a step further, you can look at going into a tabletop position, squeezing that bum as much as you can. But the real focus is what we're doing with those shoulders. So really, it's really about so much time we spend at that desk, sort of in in that position, and it really, really tightens up just the top of the chest here on the front of the shoulders. We want to make sure that we pull that back. So we're really tucking those elbows in elbow pits facing forward, lift the chest up here and drop, you can drop into it, encourage that stretch, but it's important as we encourage that stretch that we don't allow the shoulders to drop forward. So keep playing around with it, don't forget, freestyle it, if you want to push it in a different manner on a different weight, by all means please do. Keep playing around with that and don't forget at any point, if you need to stand up, shake yourself around, go for it. Yeah. Don't know anyone else who's going for the closed window challenge this morning. Close all orifices of the door. Of the room, sorry. There. Sit into those shoulders. <sighs> Keep playing around with it, guys. It's so just a little bit longer and you can start shaking things around you can start coming out of it if you need to remember focus on that breathing in now that importance don't forget you've got plenty other mobility videos to be looking at make sure that if you are someone that suffers with lack of mobility and tightness in certain areas develop your own daily mobility routine start using things that you've either follow one of our videos every day or start picking up things that you find really work for you and start adding them to your own mobility routine and comment below if you do have any questions on anything or you think actually i'd like to spend a little bit more time on that no problem we can put it in there no problem now just onto your knees now sitting back onto your toes and your heel sitting back for me just to help the underside but the real focus is the shoulders so i've done this in a couple of videos before you're going to grab a rope one side grab a rope the other and you're going to rotate the rope forward in one in one arm and you're going to rotate the rope backwards in the other one and you'll see it's almost like you're twisting your shoulders into your torso into a into a knot you had a rope and you twisted one one way or a towel one one way twist forward twist the other way and then swap swap and really exaggerate the movements really see how far you can roll that one shoulder forward and see how far you can roll it the other way squeeze round and keep focusing on that inhale through the nose and through the nose is that important point it encourages nitric oxide production so it encourages the blood vessels to be able to flow through that a little bit easier just 30 seconds more 
can shake yourself out if you need to at any point. It is warm in here this morning. So it comes through that shut that window every time. Uh, you can just start shaking yourselves out. Remember, at any point you need to stop, shake yourself around, please do. I want you to stand yourselves up, get yourself into that nice deep squat position. So drop down. Those of you that aren't used to getting into that deep squat position, find a stance which is relatively comfortable for you. Get as low as you can, and everybody's going to find this different. And if you're a real new beginner, what you can do is sit on the edge of your couch and just sit into that and on the edge of the couch and just focus on trying to pull the knees out nice and wide. Now, if you're getting there, if you're trying to work on that deep squat, I find drop down, feel those hamstrings really work. So hinge forward from that, from those hips, drop the knees out nice and wide, and just drop. Just try and sit further and further back into that squat. Really focus on getting those knees out nice and wide. And I find that really makes a difference to being able to push that deep squat position. Now just spend a little bit of time down here. Roll forward onto that foot a little bit more for me. So you're trying to minimize this angle. So rather than sitting right back here, we're gonna roll forward. Give it a little wiggle. Same on this side. There. Now from here, pulling the shoulders back, keeping that chin in, really keep that position, thumbs up helps too. From there, we're gonna roll the knee forward. Straight back here. Obviously it's okay for that heel, heel to come up and down there. Roll the knee forward. Go from side to side. That's it, dropping down one side after another. Again, particularly in these ones, when you're in that end range, you might find that you just need to stand up, walk yourself around. If you're still going, great, really well done. And don't forget freestyle it. So we're here, we're dropping down. Focusing on trying to open up those knees. You can roll over at one side, pull those shoulders back, really work on using that upper body, the upper, upper back to keep that spine and posture in position. Rolling over the other side if you want to. And then when we're in this position, driving a knee forward. Again, if you need to at any point, stand up, shake things around and focus on that breathing. Keep that as consistent throughout the session as you possibly can. Dropping down. So if you're trying to push for that deeper squat, big strong knees, sit right back into those hips, shoulders back. I spend a lot of time slouching in my chair at the moment and I have noticed a massive difference to my mobility routine. Sorry, I'm just going off track a little bit here. That's it guys. Now if you just want to start bringing yourself out of that, maybe you want to try and see if you can... Ah, hamstrings are loosening up quite nicely for me this morning. Lovely. So still focusing on that breathing guys. Grab another sip of water if you need one. Now from there, sitting yourself down, I find this far more comfortable if I sit myself back against something. Just pull those feet in, get your, basically your feet together, bottom of your feet, like you're holding your hands, and just drop, your, drop the knees apart. And same again, focus on that breathing. And you should see above you, there's a link. It says explore on demand. Oh, hello. That's tight. Where did that come from? You can explore on demand. Um, so if you want to make sure that you can see everything that you've got available to you, do have a look around. There is so much in that online hub. Check out the meal tracker, check out the stats pro progress tracker, and check out rev movement, check out coach and camp videos if you struggle with anything. 
perception or mindset based. Now just let your hands just rest on the knees. And again, I always find just giving things that just little shake just encourages things to relax. And what else encourages that relax? A little bit of contraction so you can just pull up. Try and pull those knees together. Just enough to get the contraction. People go overboard on this. They really try and get as much contraction as you can. No, 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 no. Just enough to feel a contraction. And you hold it for roughly about 10 seconds. That left side is a lot more sensitive than it normally is. Take your time with this, guys. There is no rush. You do things as and when you please. It's a great way to start the day. Ooh. Feels good. Starting to really ease into things a little bit now. Now, I'm tighter on this hip, but it's nowhere near as sensitive as this hip today. see it but in my feet like this the angle I can get this foot to I can, so this foot can curve out a slight bit more I don't think it's from the ankles I can definitely see that this this knee isn't going as low as this knee I've got to work on this as you might have seen in some of my other mobility videos my this hip this side is tighter I need to do some more work on that Okay, now, if you haven't done already, work on those contractions, work on those wiggles, it just allows things to relax a little bit more. Keep focusing on that breathing. The focus today has been about the anti-desk. So it's been, we've got one more to do, one more stretch to do on the hips. It's been that lower back, it's been the neck, it's been the shoulders. So really, again, if you're someone that really struggles with desk posture, that chin coming forward, that weakness in the upper back and the tightness in the front, the tightness in the hips, the lower back, in the back of the legs, definitely start trying to do this on a, on a daily basis. Right, guys, lift up your knees. Ooh, nice and steady. And then from there, I just want you lunging forward. If you can, have one foot behind onto something, and as we lunge forward. Now, if you don't have anything, you can take that off, that's no problem. You can do the same thing. Give that bum a good squeeze, so my knee's flat on the floor. Just give that bum a good squeeze, so we tilt the pelvis and really focus on the cross up this side so you can see a bit more clearly. Here, squeeze, so we tilt the pelvis and squeeze, squeeze here. So it pulls, it makes that front part of the hip, your hip flexor really start to work. And just relax into it. Same again. Now I'm gonna put my foot back behind me. So I hope you've enjoyed things this morning, guys. I always do. Now, you don't want to be swapped if you've started this leg you don't want to swap it around for at least another minute or so as yet but for those of you that are always if you're ever strapped for time you can do both hip flexors by sitting back down onto your onto your heels and leaning backwards but still giving that bum a squeeze as you give that bum a squeeze it just tilts that pelvis stretching on the front of the pelvis there so where the hip flexors are attached up here and down here it pulls Pulls on that hip flexor as it pulls up. So I don't have anything to demonstrate on, but if you imagine it's attached down to the bottom of the leg here and up higher up on the hip here, and you tilt the pelvis backwards, and it just pulls up. So whenever you're working on that hip flexor, think about what your hip position is doing. Don't just focus on where you're trying to put, how you're trying to push the hips forward or how you're lunging forward. Focus on the position of that pelvic tilt. So you can lean back here, squeeze. If you're not quite there, you can hold it here. Don't forget, guys, you can still be in that lunge. So if you're still there, just start thinking about probably swapping it around about now. 
that's it. When you're ready, and then again, you can breathe in. Focus on that breathing. That's it. So you can either lunge forward, and when we're lunging forward, we're thinking about that pelvic position, so we're giving that bum a squeeze. You give yourself a little shuffle around. You can have your foot up behind you on something, or you can be holding onto the back, still focus on that position. I find that's a bit too, Bit too much pressure in and around the knee for me on that one. I don't really like that one that much. Or you can have your foot resting on something. Or well, finally, you can be doing both at the same time if you're someone that's a bit strapped for time but you really want to push the hip flexors. But remember, whenever you're holding a static stretch, it's important that you take your time on them. Hit the two, three, four, five minute marker. And if you're really stuck for time, try and get that contract for 10 seconds, then relax for 20, 30 afterwards. And contract for 10 seconds. That PNF, um, again, also encourages a little bit faster relaxation. Right, guys, start coming out of it. Now, I hope you enjoyed my anti-desk routine this morning. If you're someone that really struggles with those areas, so back to the legs, lower back, neck, shoulders, hips, start challenging yourself to do this on a daily basis or as much as you can throughout the week. And don't just say you're gonna do it. Go to the use, useful PDF section, download that, that day planner and make it one of your priorities and it will make such a difference. The great thing about planning a day and writing something down is it firstly, it holds you accountable to you. And secondly, it gives you something to aim for. And if you're aiming for something and you don't hit it, you know that you've missed and you can adjust for the following day or week. If you don't aim for something, then sometimes you can find you can drift and not realize you're drifting away from where you want to be. And then when you do realize, you're probably not in a, in a great place. So anyway, food for thought. I hope you enjoyed my anti-desk routine this morning. I'm sure I'll see you all very soon. Have a great day.